that I'm a Matt channel, welcome. Right, I'm gonna start first of all by saying thank you to a new patron, Patty Ludwig. Thank you very much, Patty. Patty signed up for a year. She was an official patron, did the year in one go and then saved 10%. So it is actually a cheaper way uh, to become a patron of the Dumb Matt channel. So I ask for patrons, it gives me a bit of financial support to replace broken saw blades and worn out drills and stuff, as well as sort of paying for my time and effort to share my expertise and make these videos because they're all a, a lot of effort and very time consuming so anyway I enjoy making the videos and it's the patrons that make it possible for me to continue this channel so I really appreciate you guys if you want to become a patron yourself link in the description check it out so this video I want to talk about castings if it, when you're an employed jeweler the day may come where someone just plonks on your bench 100 of the same thing <laughs> like oh my god you can spend the whole week just cleaning up castings so I've got a bit of experience doing this and there's a way I kind, of, I kind of found to make it a bit more tolerable because it is quite painful, uh, it's painfully tedious and um, I'll just show you how I go about doing it to make it easier for myself, like mentally and physically as well. So I had the idea to do this chain ages ago, literally years ago, and these are literally my skull bead, but I adapted them to turn into a link and I've had it ready to be sent to the casters for ages, but I decided to do it now because I'm, I'm seeing loads of stuff online about uh, the price of silver is likely to go up in the near future So I thought okay, just get this chain done because it's quite a, quite a weight of silver Might be cheaper now than rather than waiting until next year or something Anyway, so I wanted to do it. So got the castings done got like 92 of them uh, It's a lot to do 92 uh, are Doing the same thing. So what I do is they came in three bags So I'm just working on one bag at a time and the way I go about it is I will like I take this bag say just call it 30 uh, I'll just go through each one, cutting off the sprue, and then put them aside, like say there's my pile, cut off the sprue, put it there, cut off the sprue, put it there, and then you end up with a pile over there, with all the sprues cut off, and then I'll take one, and then I will find, find the best way to hold it, I'll find the best way to hold it, find the best tool for it, because a, a coarse file might grip it a bit too hard, and then it gets very tiresome on your fingers, that's what I was talking about, there's sort of a, you've got to find the best way not only the quickest way, but the sort of best way for your body as well. If, if it's really, if you've got to grip it really tight, it's gonna be really painful very quickly. So I find a file that cuts quite well. It doesn't enable, doesn't push me to have to really squeeze it really tight. Um, I can't, because they're hollowed out, I can't really grip them anywhere with pliers. I did try once and uh, to hold onto that and it just bent out of shape. So I thought it was risky. I wanted to leave that as strong as possible. So don't want that bending about while I'm filing it. So anyway, found the right tool. Was actually this one, this cheap sort of in between needle file and normal file. Uh, it's not that sharp, so it doesn't catch it too much, so it's not pulling my pulling out my fingers. This is the best tool for the job. So anyway, now I found that tool for that. Do the same on all of them. So you end up filing that one, filing that one, and you end up with a pile over here. So now the sprues cut off and they're all filed up. Then I went to a paper whizzer, just whizzed over it all, over the details of the face, just find out. It takes a couple to find out exactly the best way to do it. Then I did uh, paper disc in, paper discs around it, around a bit of detail around the face. And uh, again, moving across, just putting them to that side. So I end up with them all papered up over there again. <laughs> so then they were sort of prepared and ready for soldering together. So I had to draw down a load of wire, got a load of wire spare, there's wire going through, links them together. I would do them in twos. So I'd do two, put the wire in, solder it. And by the way, this solder paste, I remember doing a video on a solder paste. I don't think I was negative about it, but I just had I felt like it's not really for me. Couldn't really see the point of it. Um, so useful and so much faster. If I had to like put flux on and cut off a little chip of solder, put it on, it could do it, of course, but it'd be so much slower than this. It doesn't need any flux. I just blob a bit of this on and then solder it up. So this solder paste has been really, really good. Very happy I've got that to do this job. So anyway, I sold up two. Obviously they're really hot, I was putting them over there. Do two, put them over there, two, put them over there. And then they put them in the acid and they come out the acid. I've got two twos and then four, and then making fours. So always a bit of a production line and not doing too much of one thing in one go. Like if I went through all 90, cutting off the sprues, it would just be doing my fingers in, holding onto it. So that's why I like breaking it up into smaller amounts. And uh, yeah, it stops you going mad as well. So I just thought of something else. Psychologically, like if your boss say, like say I'm assuming like you're an employed jeweler, that's the scenario I'm thinking of, and your boss doesn't have experience at a bench, he might not appreciate uh, the amount of work it takes, the amount of time it takes to do like simple little things, just like cutting off all the sprues on 92 castings. It takes a bit of time. So 
psychologically, at the end of the day, if you've got a load of links connected, they may feel like you achieved more than perhaps you really have. So uh, I think it's good to actually do that. And it just stops you going mad as well. And definitely faster. If you do a little production line, like I'm talking about, just doing little bits as one after the other, like kind of regimental, just, just do all the cutting, just do all the filing, just do all the papering. Um, definitely faster than just working completely on one and then moving to the next one and can do it completely on that. The, the time it takes, just picking up tools, putting them down, it all adds up. And I think it's a much slower way to achieve the same thing. So yeah, get a little production line going and just find out how, how best to do it. So just a quick chat, just sharing a bit of my experience from my past, doing multiple castings, definitely I recommend just breaking it up one way or another, just not doing too much of one thing over and over again, because it stops you going mad and it saves wear and tear on your fingertips as well, especially buff sticks. You've got like a coarse buff stick, you're doing a lot of buffing and you're holding something quite small, it doesn't take long before your skin wears away and you end up with a very sore patch on your fingertip. And uh, yeah, it's quite a, an annoying injury. I had a cut on my finger last week. Uh, it's quite troublesome doing this job when you've got cut fingertips. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> learn from my experience and my suffering in the past so yeah I definitely recommend doing like this just breaking it up a little bit helps you out uh, right that's it so um, yeah if you haven't done so already uh, click like and subscribe helps the channel grow and if you want to take it a step further you can become a patron or a a member look for a join button or links in the description to do everything as well really appreciate that and uh, if not just watch enjoy and join me again on the next one thanks bye